President Biden and former President Trump disagree on most things, of course, but there's at least one topic they can find common ground on, tariffs. In 2018, Trump began placing heavy tariffs on many Chinese goods, and when Biden moved into the White House, he kept many of them in place. Trump has promised even more extreme tariffs if he wins a second term. Joining us now is Ishwar Prasad, Cornell University professor and author of The Future of Money, How the Digital Revolution is Transforming Currencies and Finance. Ishwar, it's good to see you. Um, so as we noted there, listen, election front and center and tariffs are front and center, Ishwar. You know, Biden and Trump, um, they do have different approaches, but they both have embraced tariffs. I'm just interested, Ishwar, to begin there, whether when you think about tariffs, you know, is that, in your opinion, is that smart, effective policy? I've just returned from a trip to China, and I can tell you that the Chinese government is certainly poised um, for uh, having to deal with uh, um, tariffs under either um, a second Biden or other Democratic administration and uh, Trump administration. Now, there is going to be a change, though, in terms of the tactics and strategy. If there was to be a Trump administration in place, probably much higher tariffs. But the Biden administration has actually been quite effective in terms of limiting technology transfers, limiting China's access to chips, which matters a lot more to China right now, essentially because they're trying to move up the value-added chain, upgrade their technology sector. But the reality that China faces right now is that their recent recovery has been led by the production side rather than the consumption side, and they need export markets. So I think tariffs are coming from the US and perhaps from other Chinese trading partners as well. So Ishwar, to, to the extent that you can, I'm curious what you can share just about the sentiment of, of Chinese officials at this point towards the U.S. And if we do see this continued escalation of tariffs, what exactly the U.S.-China relationship could potentially look like here in the coming years? I think there is a baseline right now that is going to be very difficult to go below, meaning that it's going to be difficult to de-escalate tensions because in the U.S. there is very little uh, political or economic payoff to doing so. But the reality, of course, is that uh, um, if one limits imports on China, that does have effects on U.S. inflation, that does have effects in terms of limiting access to a lot of products that China is now marketing um, to a very significant extent where it has a large part of the world capacity. Now, China cannot afford to um, lose access completely to U.S. and other Western markets. As I mentioned right now, exports have been powering their growth, and at least in the short term, they certainly need export markets, and they need the foreign technology as well. So they're trying to play nice to the extent they can, trying to limit their retaliation to what they consider proportionate retaliation, but I don't think it's going to get any much better, much better in terms of the relationship between the two countries in the coming years. And Ishwar, as you said, you just got back from China. I'm interested in your take on the Chinese economy, Ishwar. Not just today, but where do you think it is six months from now, 12 months from now? Because we speak to a number of investors and money managers, Ishwar, and there, there is a fair amount of, of obvious skepticism there. There are both cyclical and structural factors that are a problem for China right now. Um, as I mentioned earlier, what China has been able to do, which a command economy is very good at doing, uh, is stoking production. So what they've done in the last couple of years is try to fuel credit to the parts of the economy that um, uh, they're traditionally relying on, which are the large state-owned enterprises. The problem is that those are not very good at generating employment growth. And more importantly, the Chinese government faces a problem right now. There are lots of underlying structural problems, weaknesses in the financial system, weakening demographics, and there is a sense of economic malaise overall. And I get the feeling that both households and private businesses in China feel that the government does not have a very clear policy strategy, either in terms of boosting short-term growth or in terms of dealing with these longer-term issues. Private enterprises feel that the government has become much more hostile. So we've seen household consumption and private investment not doing very well. And that creates a real imbalance in the Chinese economy. If consumption um, stays weak and if private investment does not pick up, that's going to make both employment and productivity growth much harder for them to sustain. So some difficult times ahead, both in the short run and the medium term for the Chinese economy. Ishwar, going back to what you just said a couple of minutes ago there when you were talking about inflation, some of the inflationary pressures that we could see as a result of tariffs, I'm curious if you can elaborate on that just a little bit here. If we do see that 10 percent blanket tariff that President Trump has floated in a couple of interviews or even escalating that up to up to 60 percent tariffs specifically on Chinese goods, what's the ultimate impact do you see 
to Americans and then that global fallout, what that could potentially look like? So there are two um, elements here, Shona. One, of course, is the direct inflation impact. Um, if you think about, um, you know, low-skill, low-wage manufacturing, which China has been very good at, um, there are attempts to find other countries from which the U.S. could import, but there aren't any that can provide those things at scale. But China is a very important part of global supply chains for a variety of other goods as well, including electronics, including um, solar panels and the sort of things that are very important for the green transition in the U.S. So in each of these, um, while the U.S. looks to build domestic capacity or looks for alternative sources of supply, the fact that uh, there are going to be rising tariffs on China will almost certainly affect U.S. prices. But the underlying fact here is that China is trying to move into those industries. I think of as them as new technology industries, green energy, electric vehicles, and so on, which are precisely the industries that the U.S. is counting on for its own manufacturing revival. So that, I think, is a structural problem in this relationship right now. It used to be seen as the economic relationship being a positive sum game. But given that both countries are now relying on exactly the same sort of industries for the future of their manufacturing sectors, it's becoming seen as a zero-sum game between the two countries. Ishwar, super interesting conversation. Thanks so much for helping us walk through it. Have a great fourth. Thank you. You too.